First, what is a stepper motor? As the name implies, the stepper motor moves in distinct steps during its rotation. Each of these steps is defined by a step angle. In the example above, you may notice that there are four distinct steps for the rotor to make a complete 360 degree rotation. This defines the step angle at 90 degrees. Since the motor does move in a discrete fashion, we can say that a stepper motor is actually a digital motor. This characteristic makes it very suitable for digital interfaces such as with a microcontroller. Okay, so we have this motor that moves in distinct steps. Where and why would I use it? Stepper motors are relatively inexpensive as compared to other motor types. Let me emphasize the word relative. There are a number of stepper motor designs that run from the most basic to very complex. The motor you choose, the resolution required, and the application at hand will determine the cost of the motor required. More important is the fact that a stepper motor can actually be used without any type of feedback loop. Since the motor moves in distinct steps as defined by its step angle, we need only count the number of steps to position the motor accordingly. This doesn't mean you wouldn't use a feedback loop in some applications. However, if feedback is not required, board real estate can be maximized by minimizing these sensing components. The unique torque characteristics of the stepper motor make it ideal for positioning applications. In fact, stepper motors have been used for years in such applications as printers and machining equipment. This type of motor will hold its position firmly at a given step providing a relatively high holding torque. Other torque related benefits include higher torque at lower revolutions per minute than your typical DC motor as well as no need for mechanical braking. A stepper motor has some basic components. First we have a soft iron stator. As the name implies this is a stationary component. Each stator will be wrapped with multiple windings or phases. These will be energized using a voltage source that when applied will initiate current flow through the winding, producing a polarity on each end or pole of the stator. The rotor is the actual rotating component on the motor. This can either be magnetized, as shown here, or non-magnetized, depending on the type of motor you select. We will discuss some of these different motor types later in this presentation. In this example, if we apply a voltage across the windings around a stator, current will flow through the winding. If you remember back in school, your professor may have discussed the right hand rule. If you take your right hand and position your fingers over a winding in the direction of current flow, your thumb will point in the direction of the magnetic flux. Here we can see that each end of the stator is magnetized to opposite poles. Magnetic flux will flow from north to south thereby continuing through the magnetic rotor to the opposite stator pole. The flux will want to travel the path of least resistance or decrease the reluctance of the path. Since the rotor does rotate, it will position itself to minimize this reluctance. As you can see, by adding more stators and phases, we can charge a winding, attract the rotor poles accordingly, then remove the applied voltage allowing other stators to attract these same rotor poles. 